Hello and welcome back. This is one of the most important component of the pillar for the whole system design. Okay. So, so the message queue. Uh, in in simple in simple words, uh, a message queue is a, a messaging system that uh, uses the queue data structure to facilitate uh, asynchronous uh, communication between uh, two services. The the areas we are going to touch upon are like what are message queues, components of a message queue, uh, different properties of a message queue, uh, message queue architecture in Nutshell and how the architecture works, benefits of using uh, message queues and message queue high availability, right? So, but I would I would highly encourage uh, to visit one of my uh, previous uh, video published the topic related to hyperscale application design and uh, architecture pattern. You can see the link to the video is flashing on the top of the right of the screen. So uh, what are the message queues, right? A mess uh, the message queue is a messaging destination that uses the, the queue data structure to facilitate asynchronous uh, communication between two services. They are commonly used in a serverless and microservice architecture design pattern. The message queue is comp comprised of two components. One is the message and the other one is the queue. So message is the data that is uh, that is passed uh, from the producer to the consumer. The data can be in form of request information, uh, metadata, uh, uh, etc. Right. So in uh, in uh, uh, in other side, the queue is uh, a temporary buffer that stores uh, messages. It uses the fast in fast out uh, methodology to you know pass the messages from producer to the consumer. So, what are the different properties of of any message queue? Right. So, message queues are asynchronous in nature. So, this enables the producer to send uh, send a, any number of messages and continuous uh, and continue with other tasks without waiting for a response from the consumer. Once the consumer processes the message, it can then notify the producer. The message queues temporarily uh, store messages uh, until they are uh, received and processed by the consumer. Each message is uh, processed process only once by a single consumer, uh, e even though the message queue can be used by many producers and consumers. And definitely not necessarily like, I mean, uh, only once, but it's all about the configuration of the consumer and how you have written the consumer to consume the data from the events from the uh, message queue itself so if you see like what are the different uh you know anatomy of the message uh any message queue so it it comes with three uh you know four different components so one is definitely we, we talk about the message and the other one is the queue and the the most important users of the uh, users of the message queue are the producers and the consumers right so producer uses the queue to you know publish the data or event and consumer uses the queue to return the event from the uh, queue itself uh, the message queues increase uh, uh, you know, uh, increase the reliability of system as the uh, as the persist data in in case uh, some part of the system goes offline. That's how it also help to you know uh, help to keep the whole application live. Uh, the improved performance uh, is the uh, is the enable asynchronous communication. Uh, so this ensures that every system component is never idle or waiting for a uh, response or request. Right. So message queue increases scalability as the system component are you know uh, decoupled and thus can be independently scaled. So this is an illustration of a message queue architecture or uh, uh, how how the you know message queue architecture looks looks like. In high level, the message queue architecture is made up of producers and consumers and the uh, brokers. Correct. So producer it. Uh, it, it acts as a client application that creates and sends the message into the queue. The consumer is a service that uh, acts as a uh, you know, receiver which receives and processes the message from the queue itself. How this uh, architecture really works? The producer creates the message and sends it to the message queue. In case the consumer is busy to immediately process it, the queue stores it until the consumer is available or or it uh, the message is valid uh, and uh, still stays in the queue 
till the retention policy configured for that particular queue. The consumer retrieves the message from the queue and starts processing it. And the message uh, queue then temporarily uh, you know, locks the message uh, to prevent it from uh, being uh, you know, read by another consumer. So after the consumer completes the message processing, it deletes the message from the queue to uh, prevent it from being read by uh, other consumers but definitely not it, this is not true for uh, for all okay for all because if you want to retain the data to use by other uh, other you know consumer groups or uh, consumers you can just you know keep increasing the offset in the queue and uh, keep going so how to make a SSQ uh, highly available? Uh, it's, it's never been an easy to uh, uh, to build a high highly available message queue in the distributed system. However, these are some of the most important points need to be considered while uh, while building and deploying such a system. Correct. So the the high availability can be achieved by adding the backup broker uh, to to the primary broker. So this can be achieved using the quorum technique, uh, like two and plus one number of brokers in the uh, cluster. We will talk about uh, quorum a little bit in depth uh, in a different uh, different session. So, uh, so publishers and consumers can uh, independently uh, specify their you know quality of service that's called QoS direct or uh, persistent so clients uh, establish connections only to the active that's called the primary broker there is no need to create or monitor multiple connections for a single client and need to maintain a, a clean and simple failover strategy or uh, whenever the primary broker fails the the backup broker uh, seamlessly switches its uh, status from the standby to the active uh, active broker allowing clients to automatically reconnect to the the active broker itself right so so that user will not really experiencing any system downtime or something like that so uh, persistent messages uh, should be automatically synchronized between the active and standby brokers before sending uh, an acknowledgement to the publisher uh, there should uh, absolutely no message loss right so that's the most important uh, um, important uh, feature has to be there when it's uh, the high, high availability comes into picture so once the failed broker uh, comes uh, comes back online message reconcil should happen in the background and automatically for persistence messages as well. There should be a monitor broker considered to avoid, uh, you know, split brain uh, scenario. So the split brain scenario is another, uh, you know, concept and tough we, we need to talk about later. So uh, so the message, uh, message order should be uh, also preserved uh, across all consumers regardless of their quality of service. These are things need, need to take into consideration when building a, a message queue for the high availability or high available message queue.